Listen, on this occasion, I'm only sitting the previously on because this episode's 46 minute runtime hardly seems long enough to wrap everything up, especially when I'm hoping 30 of those minutes are just dedicated to Balin slow combing his beard. Is it just me or does this shot manage to be phallic, yonic, and sexually penetrative all at once? Just me? Liar. Grand Admiral, the cargo transfer is complete. Thank goodness. I've been waiting so long for them to finish with this cargo transfer. It's eaten up like 30% of the season's plot. I can't wait for the payoff that'll come from showing me what's inside those boxes. You're not going to show me what's inside those boxes, are you? Come on, what's in the box? There is little the Jedi can do to stop us now. <laughs> yeah, but you only know that because Darth Filoni already announced he's making a movie to tie up the New Republic shows. I don't care if you're a witch. Reading the script is cheating. She who heard our dreams across the stars. All right, so back in episode one, I send the magic orb knowing where Thrawn is, and this is what I said. I have a funny feeling it basically comes down to the Force did it. And if I'm wrong, I'll write and perform an apology song to the tune of the Star Wars theme while juggling lightsabers. Well, it's clearly because of some witchy powers and not the Force, and as I'm a man of my word, I present to you my apology. With lightsaber juggling. <coughs> I am so very sorry, so very sorry, sorry I am. It does cauterize the whole thing. The blade of Towson. You know what, show? I am done going to Wikipedia to understand references to cartoons and books from the last few years. I will instead reward you with our own patented Blade of Talsin. <laughs> okay, this might be one of the wittiest episode titles in the history of episode titling. Makes sense for the story, the syllables line up. Hell, Wardrobe and Warlord even start the same. But did someone forget that we're dealing with some serious galaxy-threatening sh** here? A witty pun is not the shift in tone I was expecting. The blade emitter is too narrow. Ha ha ha. People complain the lightsabers were too skinny in the cartoon. Very funny, self-aware reference. Just build your damn lightsaber. Also, I didn't have Disney Adapts Galaxy's Edge build a lightsaber workshop into a live action scene on my sin card, but here we are. What happened between those two? Save your breath, Ezra. We've been wanting to know the same thing all season, but it doesn't look like... Ahsoka became afraid that Sabine was training as a Jedi for the wrong reasons after what happened on Mandalore. Oh, so you're telling him? Did no one think that crucial bit of backstory might have helped us understand their relationship a bit more? Also, Ahsoka felt her Padawan might risk falling to the dark side and just decided to stop training her? Makes sense. I mean, can you imagine if Sabine just woke up to find her master trying to kill her as she slept? <laughs> That'd be so ridiculous and out of character. <laughs> Your gamble paid off. Hold your forces there, Ahsoka. You can't claim the gamble has paid off until all the holographic cards have been revealed. If Thrawn makes it back to your galaxy, that is the very definition of the gamble not paying off. So you know. No, she just took a trip on a space wheel to another galaxy because some other witch got their hands on a one-of-a-kind map ball that was given to them by one of Ahsoka's other former battle. Yes, of course you f***ing knew you didn't destroy the orb. Sorry. Are you though? You didn't trip over your armor and fumble that ball into Balin's hands. That was a definite and considered choice you made. A choice I'm pretty confident you'd make again. Own it, Sabine. Own the fact that you possibly wrecked the galaxy mere years after it freed itself. Own that sh Over the years, I've made my share of difficult choices. Yeah, but did any of those choices ever risk bringing back the greatest threat to peace in the galaxy? Often no one understood my reasons. Except my master. Anakin. Using Anakin as your benchmark for rational decision-making is a choice. Being a Jedi isn't about wielding a lightsaber. <laughs> oh, you're funny, Star Wars. I must think you mean that. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. No, 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 seriously. Say it again, say it again. I can keep a straight face this time. Being a Jedi isn't about wielding a lightsaber. <laughs> hey, let's go. Just finished. Exactly in time to see TIE Fighters conveniently arrive, is how I think he wanted to finish that sentence. I know the fighters technically hit the engines, but this ship is an absolute tiptoeing sitting duck, and they had all of the run-up to get these shots in. This quarterback should be toast. And on the second run, they miss it entirely? At the very least, the first starting run should have been to get your eye on the target so you can lock in and obliterate that shit on the return run. And these guys never played Star Wars TIE Fighter. I really don't know how we can ever take the Empire seriously when the insanely maneuverable TIE fighters are piloted by dumbasses that think covering their helmeted faces as they fly directly into the enemy is their best course of action. 
Ahsoka's T61974 survives this. Hmm. They really should have given that a sexier name. Or at least something easier to say, like Sith Slayer. Or the indefatic indefeated but in indeferred but indefart it you know what? T61974 is totally fine. Sorry to state the obvious. This is gonna slow us down a bit. I mean, it can't slow you down any more than traveling with the space crabs, right? How fast were you going? Like three miles per hour? My pug runs faster than that when I'm popping popcorn. Only if we let it. Which is Ahsoka's way of saying, f those now defenseless turtle gremlins we've befriended. Let's leave them utterly stranded and open to attack as we gallop towards our ticket home. Consider all of the TIE fighters lost. Mark that captain for a citation. I hope that citation is for trooper most likely to disappoint the Empire by being a f***ing dumbass in the face of underwhelming odds. The options to prevent that departure are now severely limited, if not impossible. Typical Star Wars villain underestimates the good guys instead of- Which is why we should prepare for a ground assault. Oh, kind of took the wind out of my sails there, Thrawny. Wait, is this an intelligent Star Wars villain? What? That's not my Star Wars. Now we have a phallic tower of magic entering a yonic symbol of fascism, which is also being docked by a yonic piece of technology, and please tell me I'm still not the only one seeing this. The rock lizards from a far, far away galaxy are able to make sense of the strange technology on this ship and help Hugh Yang repair it while I still burn my toast every morning. Thrawn found this place. He woke up the witches, rebuilt his starship. I don't think we can overstate how lucky Thrawn he got. He landed on a planet that just happened to be inhabited by exiled witches who not only had knowledge of a map to this galaxy, but also had access to a sister witch working for the Empire who could help them. It's amazing he landed on a planet with life on it at all. Also, are we really going to just skip over how he woke up the Great Mothers? Were they dead? In stasis? We could have had an entire episode dedicated to Thrawn finding this ancient temple, braving the catacombs, and waking up these magical beings. Instead, it's brushed over in a single sentence. Rain hellfire upon them. This really should have worked. Like, really. This is a Star Destroyer unleashing fury against three squishy people. And Thrawn knows exactly where they're heading. Yes, they're using the Force Ex Machina to hell, but only up until the point they start focusing on opening the doors. How are they dodging the fire then? I shall inform the Great Mothers that it's time. Time for what? You should have left the moment Morgan informed you the cargo was loaded. I don't understand why you've been waiting around for the Jedi to catch up, aside from the script needing to give our heroes a way to almost win. Forgive me for being crude, but why can't we chop some more f***ing heads off? Or even hands? They're not sparing any lives here. They definitely intend on killing these guys, so why not make it quick and definitive? Why are we going for all these slashing and grazing shots as if we're showing this on the f***ing Disney channel? Oh. We interrupt this episode of Ahsoka to bring you Hocus Pocus, a Star Wars story. Zombies. Star Wars now has zombies. Right. This never happened before. No, this is new. No, it isn't. Stormtroopers have always basically been zombies. Faceless fodder that mindlessly attacks in mass to give the good guys something to shoot at. This is just Star Wars finally admitting it. Feel the door! Destroying a door panel makes the door react exactly as you need it to. Cliché. Still not a sex thing. Still not a sex thing. Still not a sex thing. The storming dead were stumped by a door, which actually makes sense considering they're zombies and all. What's confusing is that they've somehow retained enough intelligence to precisely set up explosives along this door to blow it up. Go on, I'll handle this. We stay together, remember? Come on, Sabine, that bullshit didn't work on Cetos and it clearly doesn't apply here. Just separate like you always do until consequences throw you back together. Yoshimitsu's mom was sent down by Thrawn to stop the Jedi from getting onto the ship. Not just Ahsoka, the Jedi. Why is she just happily letting Ezra and Sabine go? Wait a second, what's going on here? First we have an intelligent villain and now we have a still camera watching two characters fight for 10 whole seconds? Star Wars, I don't recognize you anymore and I kinda love it. troopers playing hide and seek instead of using this advantage at all shouldn't these mandalorian helmets have a chin strap on them or a buckle or something if your opponent can just take that off mid-fight i don't think it's helmeting efficiently sabine's lightsaber falls off of her hip because it knows she'll appreciate the victory so much more if she really has to work for it oh good that's what i came here to see hand-to-hand -hand combat between a jedi who just built a new lightsaber and a zombie with a strange level of hand-eye coordination the stakes could not be higher. 
Ezra waits until now to force grab the lightsaber because he either likes getting his ass thrown around or wanted Sabine to grab hers first because he didn't want to make her feel inadequate. You can't make that jump. Yes, you can. I appreciate the confidence. No, I push you first and you pull me across. Just a f***ing second now, Sabine. I mean, congrats, you managed to pick up your lightsaber using the force, but even that was a struggle. Now you're saying with confidence that you can help throw Ezra through a force jump uphill across this huge gap? If she pulls this off, I have questions about why Luke and Yoda were f***ing around on Dagobah so much. Sabine, no time, come on! Oh, f*** you, we know Sabine isn't abandoning Ahsoka. The only thing leaving this fight is my suspension of disbelief as I'm now left wondering what the f*** she's doing for the next minute or so while Ahsoka is getting her ass kicked and lightsaber destroyed. The stormtroopers suddenly decide that dealing with the Jedi scum is a spectator sport and they aren't qualified to participate. And you will die here. Alone. Not alone. If Elspeth hadn't tagged her in with that epic setup, would Sabine have ever joined the fight? Was she really just standing there waiting for a f***ing witty one-liner? Also, I guess not a single one of these troopers who are literally surrounding this place saw Sabine get into position to deliver this line. <laughs> Jedi tummy tucks are f***ing brutal. Would not recommend. Also, I guess the sword isn't so special after all and can be used by anyone who picks it up. Much like Anakin, Elspeth didn't have to sacrifice her pupils after all. <laughs> Heroes jump into a seeming abyss only to be picked up by a flying companion cliche. Why did Thrawn's ship continue to shoot the fortress instead of changing targets to Ahsoka's ship? I mean, it's kind of comforting to have the villain back to making questionable decisions, but it's still getting dinged. Long live the Empire. <laughs> this dude really got to give an entire villain monologue shortly before jumping away without any consequences whatsoever. Now that feels like a cartoon. This f***ing bird in the nonsense metaphor it flew in on giving us barely 30 seconds of Balin instead of the 30 minutes I reasonably demanded at the top of this video. I know the show's trying to set up a cute reveal for Ezra, but in what universe would they allow an unknown ship to land and not open fire upon a person wearing the enemy's armor? In reality, Ezra's ship got blown up on approach and he's a force ghost by now. Also, the episode decides to give us Thrawn and Prejudice and Zombies instead of Ezra's presumably epic escape from Thrawn's Star Destroyer. I did well, did I? Thrawn got away. Ezra got home. And all it cost was stranding two of his closest friends in the same place he's been stranded, and the return of the last and most deadly Imperial Warlord. I haven't seen a trade this unbalanced since I swapped my shiny Charizard for a packet of jelly beans. I was hungry! Ezra's where he needs to be, and so are we. By that logic, what was the point of even trying? If we're all gonna end up where we're supposed to be, I may as well just stay on the sofa watching Star Wars all day. Which is totally different from what I'm doing now, of course. It's time... to move on. Thing everyone keeps telling Dave Filoni about the Clone Wars somehow makes it into the script. I hope when I'm a ghost, I get to come back to a point in my life before I've killed a bunch of younglings and caused decades of pain across an entire galaxy. What's everyone's problem? I'm glad we're stranded. It is for the Empire. The security of our galaxy. You're my boy, Blue! You're my boy. Dracoon, Macrades, Dracorum Satis D. Dracoon, The Star Wars Holiday Special. Starring Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. Finish her! Fatality. Any zombies out there? Don't say that. What? That. What? That. The Z word. Don't say it. Why not? Because it's ridiculous. Over the hills and far away, Teletubbies come to play. 
this rate, they may get on board the ship, which would be problematic. We require a little more time. I don't want to go.